So last summer, as some of you guys may recall, I built this, which is my real replica Lucille. So a big solid wooden bat with actual barbed wire complete with some nice gore and brain chunks. But I decided to see if I could make one from scratch using similar methods that I used for my EVA foam sword. So what I've got here is some one centimeter thick EVA foam. I've got my Lucille. So I'm just gonna sort of draw around the bat. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect because I've cut all the barbed wire, which I can't take off. So just get sort of the basic cutout shape that we want. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that multiple times and then layer the foam on top of each other till we get to uh, roughly the right thickness that we want. Okay, what I've got here is some contact adhesive. This is stuff from Polyprops instead of barge cement because barge cement costs a lot to get from the US, so hopefully. This stuff is uh, a good quality as well. So what you do is you coat one side that you want to stick down, coat the other side, wait for it to be dry to the touch, put them together and it forms an immediate bond. Uh, it's better than uh, working with hot glue as, as I've discovered with uh, K2 who is actually currently on his display stand. Um, one side of it was next to a window which meant that during the summer he got a bit warm on that side and because he is predominantly held together with hot glue um, half of him has melted so I need to fix him and he will be fixed with this stuff because it's, uh, it, uh, it will hold up a lot better to the heat so that's what we're going to do and I don't know how many layers we're going to want out of this but I want it so it's um, a bit thicker than the actual bat so we can sand it down This is what we've got now. We've got six layers of a one centimeter EVA foam all glued together and in the middle with a certain part cut out we do have a little supportive wooden dowel in there just to make sure it doesn't bend too much. Not that it should because obviously when a lot of this stuff is stuck together it's quite thick but obviously we're going to cut this down so there's not going to be as much ridge support there so that should help. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my uh, Stanley blade, I'm just going to carefully carve out a shape, very rough shape using this first, before um, we actually start sanding it down to try and round everything off. Lots of sanding later, here is the finished shape of the, what I'm now going to refer to as the Stump Lucille Bat. It's a little bit of, sort of around where it joins the handle, it's a little bit off depending which angle you're looking at it, but I don't think that is too bad for a, for a little sort of hand sanded job. So we've got about the right sort of size compared to my other Lucille bat, we've got the right length. This one is a tiny bit thicker, but this one, the barbed wire, because I couldn't get it flush to the bat because it was so tough, that makes this bat look a little bit thicker. And the barbed wire we've got is actually a string barbed wire, so it's going to sit flush to this one. So in the end, like the illusion's going to be that they are kind of the same size. So now this has been sanded down, the next step is to seal it, and we're going to use our trusty plaster dip to do that. That'll give us a nice base in order to be able to paint on it and the challenge will be to get it to look like an actual wooden bat which is going to be a bit difficult for the paint job but I should be able to do it. So the bat has now been plaster dipped, just sprayed that on, gave it a couple of goes over, had to do it before it started raining and now it refuses to stop raining. 
So I have to move in here and just be very careful to try not to get any paint on anything. So now we're just going to do the base colour of the bat, which I'm going to do in a off-white, it's kind of like an ivory colour. So we got the base colour all sprayed onto the bat. Now we actually want to make it look a little bit like wood, so we're going to go over it by hand with some acrylic paint. Going to be using a mixture of like browns, reds, oranges, just try and see if I can get it to look a little bit more wooden. Just going to go over it with a brush and uh, some tissue paper because I'm just going to water it down and just kind of experiment with it until I get to a point that I'm happy. And with the back just drawing, just going to go over and paint some of this. This is um, fake barbed wire. I thought I'd ordered plastic barbed wire, but I've actually ordered a string uh, barbed wire. So, you know, this is a version to it. If you've found some sort of like a thick kind of silver string, you can twist it together and tie it. And it does look pretty good from a distance. So just going to paint it up a little bit so it's a little bit more bloody and rusty. And uh, then when the back's dry, we're just going to stick that on. So I've got some of this which is this flexible garden wire, it's a little bit similar to kind of like armature wire, so that stuff is thin but you bend it into any shape and it holds its shape. So I'm actually going to use this in place of using bent nails to actually fix the barbed wire into the foam because it should be sharp enough that we should be able to push it through the foam and it should hold there fairly well and obviously it's not going to be anything solid so the bat is still nice and safe. So now our barbed wire is on, that's looking pretty good, but we just need a little bit of gore so we can match our other Lucille. So we're going to go for the exact same technique as we did for the other one, using uh, this which is 5 minute epoxy and I'll mix it with watercolour paint so it dries shiny and it has a really nice colour to it so it makes it look like wet blood. And there you go, that's a one finished stump version of Lucille. Now if there's one thing that I would say to do differently that I've done, I'd say put in a thicker dowel rod in there because with testing it out, um, the handle did snap a little bit so I had to cut into it, glue it back together and re-stick it. So go for a thicker dowel rod, it's just because you need the support in the handle more than you do up top because obviously up top is a thicker bit of foam but down here is uh, fairly thin. Just doing that means you're less likely to break it if you're swinging it around for pictures. Obviously, you really shouldn't be swinging it around too much anyway, just for the safety of the other people, because it is still a fairly solid object. So that's two versions of Blue Seals. I think this one looks aesthetically better, just because the barbed wire on this is a lot brighter colour than what this one is. So both of them have got their own individual styles, and obviously this one is something that would be display-only purpose, because uh, 
Yeah, it's very heavy and will most likely actually probably rip a zombie apart whilst this might just give them a light headache. So I hope you've enjoyed this build and if you want to come see both of these in person then please come down and see me at Walker Stalker 2019. That was Harrison moving the camera. Hey buddy, are you coming with me? I'll never show up as a zombie. I did a little reveal video on Walker Stalker so if you want to check that out the link for the website is down in the description if you're already going or if you're thinking about going. There'll be all the information on the Walker Stalker website there. And uh, what do you think, buddy? Do you like the build? Was it, was it good? You helped me out for a lot of these builds recently because you were feeling very lonely. You stuck with me a lot, didn't you? So as usual, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Big thank you to Jeff Kenny and Mortarion as well. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. And as always, may the force be with you.